Up next, a review of the board game Chocolatiers. Uh, Chocolatiers was designed by Isaiah Vallejo and features art by Claire Donaldson. Published in 2019 by Daily Magic Games, was originally a Kickstarter, speaking of Kickstarter, uh, was a project in February of 2019, which did fund, though I didn't note down exactly how well it funded, but it funded and was produced. I do not have a Kickstarter copy. I have a physical copy, which was picked up at Origins and provided by Daily Magic Games. No other compensation besides the review copy was provided. Up first, what's in the box? All right, when you first open this rather small box, surprisingly small, this is not a big box game, especially for Daily Magic. Most of their games are in large boxes. This is a little nice portable box. You got seven punch boards. On those are mostly square chocolate boxes. Like, think of your Laura Secord, your, I, I don't know, I think that's a Canadian company. I don't know a U.S. equivalent, Purdy's Chocolates, whatever. Your sampler, right? Your life is like a box of chocolates, your Forrest Gump thing. Uh, you got a little box of four chocolates. Um, there's also some end game scoring tiles and some bonus chocolates, which look like Ferrero Rochers, uh, these things right here. Looks like these. Uh, on there, and uh, the punch boards are solid. They, they punch easy enough. They're good thickness, pretty standard. Uh, what I did like that stuck out right away is they did that glossy thing, like they did on the cover of Cthulhu Death May Die. Like, this seems to be a thing. Mechs versus Minions did it for the oil slicks. Like, I don't, I don't know what you call it but they put like a glossy coating on some of the art. I thought that was really well done. So the chocolates kind of shine. Under the punch boards are the rules. They're short, concise, very clear. Absolutely no complaints about them. Uh, they're simple enough. You could probably open up the game, read them out loud and start playing in about 10 minutes. Added to that, there's even a um, one sheet, a uh, one page, two sided rule summary sheet, which is just like the rules aren't, there may be five pages and the summary sheets too. Uh, this thing's perfect. Like, once you've played the game once, you can just use that to reference. And then there's a pack of Hobbit-sized cards, you know, the type, the Fantasy Flight, little tiny cards. Not a huge fan of small cards, but eh, they are what they are. There are 51 cards in total, each representing a different chocolate. There are six different chocolates. Some are more common than others. For those listening, what Mo calls Hobbit-sized cards are usually sized so that two side-by-side -side are the same as one regular-sized playing card. Oh, okay. That's just the, uh, the dimensions of them. So now we know what you get, how do you play Chocolatiers? All right, to set up, you make a market of chocolate boxes, you make a market of chocolate cards, just like your Ticket to Ride or any other card market. Each player gets a small starting hand of cards and three bonus chocolate tokens. Scoring tiles are then put in the center of the table. You use all of them every game, so they're not randomized. Each turn, players take two actions. They can be two the same or two different. One is draft chocolate cards. Take one chocolate card or discard a chocolate card from your hand to take two from the market. As soon as you take them, they're replaced. Reserve a chocolate box. Take one of the chocolate boxes, put your bonus chocolate on top of it, and it's now yours. Only one person can have it. You mark it by having a thing on it, and you can only have one reserved at a time. Once you've got one reserved, you can play it. You, to do that, you have to discard chocolate cards matching the chocolates that are in the box. Uh, at this time, you can also discard two identical chocolates to count as any other card. When it's played, the chocolate box is then added to what's called your sampler. So you're going to add it to the other boxes you have. You are making a two by three grid of these chocolate boxes, and it can go horizontal, whatever. You're limited to that size. The other thing you can do is spend one of your bonus chocolates. You get three of these at the beginning of the game. If you save them, they're worth a point each. These go into a spot on one of your already placed chocolate boxes. This can cover another chocolate or go in a blank space, either way. You keep doing this, going around the table until someone completes their full sampler, the two by three grid. At that point, you finish the round. Everyone doesn't get another turn. It ends immediately that round. You finish the round, the game ends. Uh, the first player to complete their box gets a special scoring tile worth two. Then players get points for each chocolate box they have. So each of those uh, two by two grids of chocolates are worth a certain number of points that are shown on the tiles. Um, then you then score the bonus tiles. There are one of those for each of the different chocolate types. And it's the player that gets the points is the player who has the most of that chocolate in their box touching each other, like orthogonally adjacent. So whoever has the most whatever mint chocolates together is going to get the mint bonus tile. And whoever has the most peanut butters is going to get the peanut bonus tile. There's also one bonus tile given to the player who bought the crappiest boxes, which sounds weird, but like the boxes are worth different points. Whoever bought the most that are worth only three or four gets some bonus points for taking bad boxes. Player with most points wins. That's it. It's pretty dead simple. Like, I basically just taught you to play. If the components were in front of you, that was probably enough description to be able to play the game.
Okay, so what's the theme of the game? Yeah, again, I don't explain the theme. So you are a chocolatier trying to make the perfect sampler. And what the people want is groups of the most chocolates, right? So those are your bonus scoring tiles. Uh, they're also impressed by boxes that use the low points, which I don't know how the points correlate. So yes, you are a chocolatier trying to assemble the perfect sampler box of chocolates. See, Sean, Sean pointed out my mistake. I am terrible <laughs> at mentioning the theme. Come on, the game is called Chocolatiers. Can't you figure out what the theme is? See, that's the way I think. I'm like, you got it, right? It's chocolates. Yeah, fair enough. All, All right. right. So you got to admit, it, it sounds pretty simple, and it is. It really is. It is dead simple to learn, dead simple to teach. That two-page rule summary is probably enough to learn the game from, even if you don't have the full rules. But it's one of those games that once you start playing, then you notice the depth. It's one of those games I, that I call you Eureka or aha moments. So you're sitting there and you're playing the game like, yeah, hey, yeah, I'm getting chocolates. And you're like, ooh, wait a minute. That chocolate box is worth nine points. But the reason it's worth nine points is because the damn chocolates in it are diagonally adjacent. So they're not going to count for majority. So do I want the nine box or do I go with a nice cheap four box that has chocolates that are near each other, right? And there's your aha moment about drafting your box and how important the placements were. Even when placing them, like, oh, wait, I got to stick by a two by three grid. Like that takes a minute to you're like, yeah, I knew that at the beginning, but the way that works. And then the other thing too is you'll notice just how important those bonus chocolates are. Because when you first start, you're like, oh, I'll just use that to fill the blanks. But then you realize, no, I could get a lot more points if I cover up this mint chocolate to make all these peanut butters be next to each other. And then you get the next aha moment when you start stop looking at your own board and start looking at other players. And that's where the game really shines, is that this game is all about trying to deny your opponents, probably even more so, than trying to do right by yourself and keeping track of who has the most of everything. And if he gets this tile, how many peanut butters will he have versus mine? And knowing to go, oh, you know what? There's no point in me competing over mint because Sean and D are already fighting over mint. So I'll let them have mint. And I notice neither of them are collecting whatever. So I'm going to collect that, right? It's one of those games that just, it has different levels of play, right? Like almost emergent gameplay where you sit down, you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm drafting cards and building chocolates. And you're like, oh, 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 wait, now I see. So interesting. this is uh, what they consider, um, what most people consider a pretty light filler. Uh, it's 20-minute yeah. play. It rates a 1-4 on, uh, on uh, the weight for, uh, for Board Game Geek. Wow, that's lower than I would have thought, um, actually. Well, to be fair, I, um, how many times have you played the game? I am years? at six plays. You're at six this. plays? Because a, a lot of what I'm seeing is that most people are like, this is a really great kind of gateway game for a non-gamer. Uh, but it, it basically all those aha moments come and are gone and you're left with a lot of randomness and, you know, not too much else a lot for the, for the gamer gamer. Um, whereas the newer gamers tend to like, and that, that's what I'm seeing. And uh, it's, it's been knocked down. It's a six, seven right now on BGG. Wow. Okay, yeah. That's lower um, than I would have thought. Because, because of the, the, the sort of randomness. And again, the, the, the real gamers are finding that after enough, after a few plays, there just isn't enough. See, I didn't find that at all. And like Deanna points out, I probably facilitated more than six plays. Like we even had this in the board game blitz tournament and I thought it fit in well. Like I would, I wouldn't even call this one light. I consider this one a thinky filler. <laughs> Just once you get to that level of trying to deny the opponents, I almost wonder if people didn't give it enough of a try Possibly. and didn't get to that level, right? They, they played it with, yeah, yeah, it's drafting cards. It's fun. I played it before and moved on and gave it a five. Right. right. That's I almost wonder if it's the other way around. Like, yeah, it's I wouldn't say it's thinky thinky, but I don't know. Like to me, it seems like an extremely tight set collection game. And like I said, it's all about watching what the other players are doing and adapting your strategy to the changing game state, noticing that suddenly someone has more of something than you. And even like, yeah, there's randomness with the cards going off. But the fact that you can discard two of any one to be anything and then there's that ability to discard a card to draw to so almost any turn you can get a wild card if you need it right. i don't know i just didn't find it that way hmm, like i wouldn't call it a brain burner it, it's not but like it's 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 just on the edge of thinky filler right i i personally found it pretty brilliant especially compared to just how simple the rules are Everyone I've taught it to has seemed pretty happy with it. Like every time I put a game in the blitz, I always ask, like, was that a good tournament game? Right. And the fact that people thought it was a good tournament game. Now it's in the same bracket as I have games like Imhotep. Right. And um, Gizmos, I think, was in the same bracket. So it's not your big, heavy thinking games. 
But like I put it above, say a red seven. Okay. Well, maybe uh, maybe I'll have to add this to the pile of things to try and fit in when I'm try, down, and, there you and, go. and and get and get my own experience because I'll get right at this moment. All I've got are a lot of board game yeah, yeah, opinions, which you know I, we all know to uh, take with a grain of salt. Yeah, uh, maybe I'm the only one out here who likes this game. <laughs> <laughs> it is possible. I mean, here, there's we'll a, there's a lot of sevens, but it, you know it is trending below seven. So, yeah, no, I'm surprised. I'm surprised it's it's right. I didn't look in this case. Most of the reviews I try not to I try not to bias myself by looking at it. I know you always look them up while I'm reviewing them, but yeah, I I, I wait till we get your opinion and then I sort of yeah. I try to. And again, I I can't look through all however many thousand. Well, no, obviously they've not. got uh, actually no. This one's only got 110 ratings, so it could. Well, it that's, could trend that's up. actually pretty low. That that's is, a low that number is actually lower than I expected. So that could trend up over a seven again uh eventually I, the problem is i, I think it's it's gonna get lost in the mix right it, it, it's a neat thank you filler but it's it's no next terraforming marks right like it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's no next go cuckoo it's no next azul right it's it's just it, i don't think it had the splash and i gotta admit it's also very different from anything else daily magic puts out mm. like daily magic i think card tableaus right? right like that's just what they do they do card tableaus and engine building games this is neither well, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe we can draw your your opinion can uh, help <laughs> shift it up true. a little bit. There we go. Well, yeah, for like like Deanna says, and next year, no one probably no one will remember this one, yeah. which is possible. I I plan on keeping my copy just for the board game blitz, if nothing else. There aren't a lot of under like forty five minute, half hour, under half hour games that aren't totally random, right? That yeah. are have that thinking involved. And yes, there are random factors, but that that are thinky fillers, right? All right, well, for a slightly more in-depth look at Chocolatiers, check out Mo's written review over at tabletopbellhop.com. Just click on Reviews.